back. You can hear my voice. You can hear the teams as well as everyone is getting amped up. Once again, my name is Orbital. As you can see, I'm looking off on the side of the screen because we have a fantastic time. LeChance did have to leave for right now. And of course, I believe he is gone for the rest of the day. Thank you so much to him for working out here. Uh, we are getting underway with our second game, third game. I like it is going to be EGL versus EXE coming onto the board here. So let's go ahead and get underway with it. For those that are interested, though, because uh, I am the only one here and I get to have a little bit more fun, feel free to ask questions inside of the chat. Anything about me, anything about the teams, anything about the league, anything about the game, anything that you you ask i will try to answer as long as it was in my uh a custom voice and stuff like that but getting into it here before i go a little bit too crazy we are honed in both these teams are currently sitting at O and one they need a dub on the board if they want to earn some points here in this league and to ensure some playoff points as well taking a look of course it is going to be exc over on that blue side and you can already see the target bands if you will, the Darius, the Katarina, and the Akshan very appropriately taken away. The Orn and the Scion, though, hard targeted at Alex in the top lane. Understandably so. You just don't want to deal with that. The Jinx as well against Solo Mason. I think it's an overall good pick. And Ban just saying, look, we don't want to deal with that here today. Don't allow it to go any further. Looking here, though, Solo Mason had a time, uh, a good time against the Caitlyn this time around taking it for themselves at the Jinx off the table. I think there might be a default over to the Ash, uh, which would be appropriate unless you do choose something else, which if you do do the Sivir, that is going to lend itself to a much larger uh, team coordinated fire. Uh, this is going to be quite interesting if it's locked in because the early game is also going to be seen as a detriment. You do not have that value. You do not have that range to actually fight back. And it's going to focus a lot more heavily on ensuring your safety ensuring that you're able to stay alive come on bring that briar i haven't seen it as of yet i want to see the briar online i want to see it punched up i want to see some punch i want to see some kicks i want to see some glory if that is locked in that will be in the jungle roll and uh have a little bit of fun there as well all right it's locked in we got a briar first briar of the day everyone we are set let's have a ball please Oh, man. This now brings about an interesting situation because now you have pretty much a guaranteed stick on. If you hit Caitlyn with that ult, you are now stuck. And also with the speed up from the Sivir, how do you get them away? How do you keep Briar away? How do you keep the rest of the team away? This is one way to do it. The invulnerability, getting the Tark in there, making sure that you deny any extra damage. Of course, for Drew, you really have to make sure that you have the right ult on target, right? Haruki looking at... Uh, that Orianna in the mid lane. This is going to set up the Tark really nicely. It also puts a pinch on the jungle pool. Uh, I feel like Alex is going to be left quite alone uh, on the side of EGL. They themselves are probably going to be okay going up with the counter pick there. The jungle is what I'm really worried about for the second ban phase here. Um, so we'll see how that goes and see what runs. Uh, at the current statement, though, I myself am... Still curious, do you match the Orianna? If you do, maybe a Syndra comes out, uh, if you so choose. No, you're actually going to grab the support, right? Because you already uh, dropped up the Briar. This is now a heavy coordinated bot lane. Okay, I like this. I like this. Will it continue, though? That's the other side of it, right? Do you continue to snowball on top of the Sivir and Briar, or do you look for some other angles? Do you decide to go for a damage heavy and actually try and challenge Alex? In that regard, do you try and fight in your own way? The J4 taken away. I can appreciate that. Don't let the Wombo combo go their way. Taking a little bit of a look here, though. It is the Zoe ban in the mid lane. Taking away a lot of power in that sense. Also, the Sleepy Trouble Bubble would be a great deterrent to keep Alex uh, or to keep Solo and Drew away. So I can, I can understand that. The staggered ban phase uh, coming out here, which is understandable. Another jungle ban that could be appropriate. I wonder what that's going to be. It is going to be that Olaf targeted top jungle. Instead, Demon Ruler not going to have that CC negation. They should run through the immunity to be pulled through. Cassidin, okay. Heavy on the emphasis of damage, saying you will have to go to a support-ish, if you wish, or dig down into that champion pool. Three bans. Sent to that mid lane. Taking a look here. It is going to be a Maokai hover. 
And the Maokai lock in, so that might be a Briar topside as well. I have seen Briar topside. Um, it's very, very interesting, the trade outs that you can get. Maokai into the jungle makes a lot more sense. And I think this is going to be appropriate if you do decide to go that Teemo. Uh, it is a direct annoyance to the likes of Briar, who is auto attack focused. You get that blind down and you're very, very strong. Come on, do it. Do it, Alex. I know you want to do this. Oh, it's going to be the Vi. Gosh dang it. I was, I was teased. That makes me sad. But again, uh, the Vi had its moments in game number two today. Um, it had its powerful moments as well. The pick composition is not as studious, to say the least. It is not that all-encompassing, hey, we ult one person, we get the kill. Instead, you're looking for a ball delivery system. This is basically going to make Vi an intargetable uh, wrecking ball. The Singed, though. Okay, Alex saying Singe is going to be my main point of character. You get that Rallyze, you get to slow everyone down. Sivir can't cross over as easily. Lulu can't either. Briar is going to have to walk through the poison the entire time. And that burn is going to be brutal. So now what do you want to take in the mid lane? You're up against an Orianna. There's only so much that you can do. You're going to go tank? Okay, I like it. Bully moments all around. Cho'Gath coming out here. Where are all the swaps coming in here? I'm so, so curious. Is that Maokai in the mid lane or... What do you send? That's a Briar mid? Okay, this I have not seen in quite some time. Again, the lane shortness does benefit Oriana a little bit more. Hiruki should enjoy that one uh, to their own side. But man, this is going to be a challenge. I'm... I'm so excited to watch this play pan out. Again, the differences between all these champions is it's going to be that run and gun, the, the flexibility coming out of blue team uh, outside of EXE. On EGL's side, they're a little bit more brutish. The Sivir will allow them to get close, and yes, you have the tethers and the knockups. However, um, I'm just... I I'm just very, very curious. Overall, the Sivir and Briar being your main power points of focus for damage is... A little bit short-handed you don't really have any range to try and catch a caitlin if they're able to swarm away so honestly all of the aggressive stances are being set on top the cc lays very heavily with the likes of exe they're going to be very happy about the current setup however if they fall behind like they did in game number two if they start losing out on the bot side I mean, the Briar can take off, that Cho'Gath can take off, so there are abilities, but in terms of if it's even in the mid to late game, the pick threshold, I think, and the ability to call shots in their own rights will go the way of EXE. They have more potential, they have more ability to focus down a singular target, and their CC is a little bit more reliable from a distance. You had the Vault Breaker or the... Uh, um, the Assault and Battery, you have the Oriana Shockwave to draw everyone together, you have the Caitlyn for the range and the Tar Cosmic Radiance. If applied correctly, they have so much immunity and ability to find either Sivir or Briar. If either of those two go down, the, uh, the damage scaling coming out of EGL is low. Now, for EGL, the thing that they're going to be happy about is Singed, Vi, and Tark will all be coming to them. Cho'Gath, great feast opportunities if you get them low. Maokai, perfect CC routine. Briar, easy access to backline. If you have the Vi, Singe, and Tark in your face, Briar ults the backline, you're good. You're perfect. No worries. Sivir with the speed ups, the on the hunt will be used to uh, readjust your positioning. It's I, I just still favor a lot of the CC oriented teams here. Um, especially, I, maybe I'm a little bit biased, uh, the Caitlyn also had a lot of fun in game number two and had a lot of value, so maybe uh, Solo also comes out with some punches of his own. Uh, Spicoli saying Singe is immortal this game, what? Yeah, I, I agree, if played well, Singe will not die. Uh, the fact of the matter is as well, Briar and Sivir will be the only two that can actually do a significant amount of damage depending on what Singe builds. Uh, Alex will be immortal just running around, dropping poison on the ground and just not caring at all in the world so uh, we'll see how that one plays out once again welcome here to the egl the edge gamers league i believe uh, they are enjoying a lot of fun over there and uh, honestly i want to give a huge shout out to vindy for allowing me to uh, put this show on uh, i reached out on a whim i believe to i think it was solo mason actually uh, i can't remember who i reached out to i think it was solo and just said hey uh, do you want someone to kind of cast this uh, event uh, you're having a lot of fun on this weekend this was back i think like monday or tuesday 
um, of this week. And uh, Vindy was kind enough to give me a call and said, hey, uh, do you want to come on? And we'll go ahead and give you, a, give you a try. So if you like what you hear here today, please go ahead, drop them a hit, and uh, join the community. Also, get involved in a lot, of, uh, a lot of these tournaments and a lot of this enjoyment. And let them know if you liked me here today because I certainly enjoyed here. The games are high quality. The games are extremely fun as well. Everyone seems to be on a nice edge and walking that tightrope of excellent skill as well as the gamble and risky payoffs. So very, very fun uh, to say the least here. Getting into things, we are pretty much honed in, zoned in, and ready to charge. You can hear it already. The sound coming through. Let's go ahead and uh, have some fun here if the game decides to lose. There we go. We're good to go. Taking stock here, we got the uh, the Moss Tomper. A little bit of a shielding Sunday. coming in for Demon Ruler, but the water's coming out for the Maokai. A little bit of a slow speed. <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, I actually see the coal on both ends uh, for the ADCs, more. and that in itself surprises me. Both ADCs think we want to go ahead and play a little bit safer. We want to play a little bit smarter and farm up for the mid to late game. And I think someone pointed out before, yeah, uh, the current state of league and this is something that is very very interesting is that it is uh slow paced it is going back to that age of old of you know 35 40 minute games you want all the tank you want all the late game stats and i mean i play i play terrible champions like vigar anivia syndra um oriana these champions that want to play for late game that want to get the items that want to blow people up i mean i love it I will sit here for 45 minutes, uh, same as before. 50 minutes used to be the average for me, which is terrible because I couldn't close out a game to save my life. Uh, you know, it's a, it's one of those things. But uh, taking a look here, we're setting up for a very, very quiet start. But uh, this lane here, Likeable and Hiruki, are going to be the two that kind of interest me the most. Because Likeable... I mean, Briar came out very early on in the draft, and... That signals to me that you're trying to flex the champion. In this mid lane, yes, it has a lot of power later on, but you are praying for Hiruki to not really be that agitated, not really be that much of a bully, but I mean, you see here already having a little bit of difficulty farming up the wave, just trying to get those little chips in, but I, I don't think Likeable really knows the damage output. We'll see how it plays out at the end of the day anyway. Already having some fun, but uh, uh oh, Jens Nala, you did the wrong move. That's gonna be a kill, and I mean, that's what Alex wants to do. Again, on the Singe, you know the proxy is gonna be coming out. I saw it on the menu map. I wasn't sure about the HP, and Jens Nala gets cut down at uh, camp number three. Damaging, to say the least. You only got two full, and that's gonna set you behind. Demon Ruler has been granted a gift from Alex. Now in the mid lane though, Haruki has to run away again. The Berserk is doing so much work. Down to about a quarter to the likable at level three said, all right, I am ready to go. Let the Berserk flow through me. These are going to be the challenges left, right, and center that both these squads are going to have to face. A little bit of picks here and there though. Fishing for damage on this bot lane is the best way to put it. Solo Mason already at 21 CS. And Adam just trying to pick up what's underneath the tower, but can't really find it. Only 16 to their name. Guns, uh, Jens Nala. Now faced with the possibility of falling behind in two to three camps. Berserk going in on almost on the tower, though. Thankfully, likable. Uh, can stay away thanks to that shove out. And honestly, uh, Briar is still one that I'm on the fence about, right? There are so many different situations to uh, kind of have that champion. It's a great damage dealer, but. Right now, what you're looking at is the setup. You can take a look in mid. Good little gank here. Jens Nala, though. I repeat, way too far away. Way too safe. Demon Ruler. Looking for a chance of their own. No real low HP until now. Jens Nala taken down very, very quickly. And Red Buff is going to steal it. Remember, Flash is up. But a Flash of Follow should be there. You're going to try and twist in, but no chance to save. Great second kill. Hyruki now going to flash back to safety. And because Berserker is looking, had to trade one for one. It is going to be a 1-2 trade in favor 
of the likes of EXE. Zombro as well gonna be a little bit of annoyance. Doesn't get stunned up, but denies the recall. And now the auto attacks are gonna work really quick. Spell shield means solo eats a chunk. And the value handed back to the bot by EDL. But they can maintain focus. It'll be very, very good. Solo Mason is true. Do not want to recall just yet. Ghost was actually popped by Solo Mason, which is quite surprising. Drew, though, dancing very, very far up. Jen Nala realizes that there's no wards. Wave is being pushed, and now you get to jump in. Heal comes out from Drew and gets him under the tower, but that's still the kill. Drew falls. Is going to die. Adam takes the tower shot for their jungler and a great kill back, but it lands in Zombro's pocket. Not exactly the optimal choice to have their flash forward. I'm not sure if you really wanted that. Q goes wide. Solo Mason doesn't die, but it was a risky choice nonetheless. And Adam gets to escape with their life. Best of time and time again here. Another little, little chase. Good stun. Hiruki. Gets shoved out, wave pushed back as well, and everyone looking for inches. But likable is now down. Not CS or some. This wave should be able to help catch him up. So take a look. Missing all the CS. Missed four right there. That feels so bad. Hiruki, as long as you don't die, I, I think you're pretty okay with this outcome. Already has that lost chapter. Already feeling pretty much in control. And yeah, likable can't actually step up anymore. This is a problem, especially with Dragon coming up here. Pretty much a minute past. Fully handed to EXE. They will enjoy that buff to their name. That is going to be the Kentex heart. No Kentex soul. Enough to gain a little extra value. Now taking a look, we get to look at this top side as Alex already has a kill to their name and is going for, I think, those Merc Treads uh, to try and be an annoying good knock up there from Sir Isaac but the Ignite was ticking away because Alex does have that Hextech Flash. I can have the Flash available. Jump in, though. Once again, in this mid lane. Shockwave, though. Drew him in. Oh, Hiruki wins it out. What an understanding of tower range. I was wondering how far they were going to go. Likeable tried to cancel their knockback, but it was such a power play. Hiruki now getting a solo kill in mid. Now puts his priority and an even more devastating. Great. Hiruki will be a point of contact for these ensuing fights. And Drew and Solo Mason just need to farm. EXE enjoying this current situation. Man, I mean, EXE, every lane so far has felt like it's going in their favor, right? They've enjoyed this situation. They've enjoyed a lot of these early kills, and they've enjoyed this power. Hiruki now getting jumped on, though. Doesn't have flash, doesn't have anything. And because of that, the stuns and roots are going to bring it back. Genzala helping out Likeable to get this lane under control. Taking a look here. Through. Stepping up and around, trying to be that frontward facing while the rest of the team powers on through the top side. Sir Isaac Newton getting jumped on. And, I mean, that one was just cookie cutter perfect. This is the XE playing their early game well. Uh, we talked about a demon ruler on the spy in game number two. Was looking very, very strong. Looked very much in control as well. Because of the current situation, you are happily in control, except for Alex, who is not in control. I think uh, no ult in Briar, so you can't follow up on the team's power. But this is Drew taking very, very low. Boomerang throws out, and Adam says, no, we will not go quietly into the night. We have waited long enough. Great kill. Onto that back pocket, so Adam is starting to ramp up as a carry of their own. One kill is enough for that new equipment. Now a lane swap coming in here, which is a, a little bit questionable. I don't know how long this is going to last. Maybe just because Life is in the top lane. But... Uh, the lane swap will work a little bit more in favor of Likeable. Now, you are face off against Alex, who can be stunned up, who can be rooted. But, uh, again, Hyruki's getting the better no matter who they face against. Both of them are melees, and you're going to be able to power farm your way to victory. Uh, you should come out. I wonder if it's going to be a Leandri's task. I would think so. should help out quite a bit. Uh, Alex building towards that Rylai's ASAP with Merc Treads in tow. Let's 
off themselves. Okay, so it was only Kemper, Hiroki, and flashing directly into that challenge, into that ult, but you still get the kill. And remember, the bleed through is real. That's gonna be a double kill. Hiroki gets a favored 1v2. It was almost gift wrapped. Hiroki has been gifted the last three kills that they've gotten, and it is devastating. Remember, Briar is an all or nothing champion, and Jens Nala was not expecting to be forced into that fight as well. Hiroki being gifted another set of about a thousand gold. EGL taking some of these unfortunate fights and not winning out at all. That's gonna be a flash forward though. Hiroki now makes a mistake of their own and drops for the third time this game. I mean, just as much as I'm counting the praise, they are falling into situations. That's not only a kill, but a shutdown to a Briar. Likeable is saying, I am likeable as well. Let's get some points of our own. Demon Ruler gonna save this mid lane tower. But man, back and forth and back and forth. The gold lead is ever changing, but not really seesawing. You take a look, it's about 2k in favor of the side of EXE. And they're going to continue to enjoy this point. Again, as long as Demon Ruler is on top, it's big. However, the out has been found. But the toss throws them into the goo. Is able to slow them down. Again, this uh This uh this Singe and Oriana combo is dominating in the CS advantage. Solo Mason maybe not at the start. I should say. Start of the Rift Herald. The jump forward Hyruki just being a bully menace across the board. Taking a look here, we are kind of stumbling our way to the front end of this fight. Another flash forward though. This is going to be a shove, and again, Jens, Nala getting taken quite low, but this time you have the help from Zombro. Third time is the perfect charm. As a kill and nothing granted is given to Hiroki. Uh-oh, though. Demon Ruler said, I see you in the fog of war. Well spotted, well fought, easy pickup. You change it to a one for one. I mean, this is just never stopping. Briar ult goes off wide, trying to find Drew, but yeah, these teams go. are scrapping. We're sitting at about 14 kills across the board already, and Drew is now gonna have to sprint out with the heal. Solo Mason now comes away from lane after pushing in that wave, and Dragon is available. EXE want this global objective because they gave up Herald on the backside, uh, which did go to Sir Isaac, by the way, who, again, struggling to try and get any semblance of a lane pressure set. The, the singe factor is getting out of hand. Take a look at this. Now two towers in, but the pinch, the camp is in mid lane. Hiroki getting the full treatment, but a great cosmic divide and the stun, the save from behind the wall, the ace in the hole to steal the kill away. EXE on point. Not a moment to waste either. Brutal showing here. I mean, EXC feel like they have EGL's number. Good take of the camp, but I mean, at this point, we are seeing some ecstatic differences. Hiroki and Demon Ruler are on top of things. Drew willing to extend that flash to save their mid laner in tow. And then this bot side, Solo Mason now 30 CS up. The kills may not be as far away from each other, but the gold could not be in a different 4K and about three of that is specifically off of CS Differential. Alex now being jumped on, a kill could come through. I mean, you don't really have anywhere to go. The proxy farming is finally taken care of at least once so far in this game. <sighs> now taking a look, staggering our way into this mid game. Likeable. Still eating a lot of chunks, not going for that sustained damage. Instead, going for that assassination build. Trying to get a death lead down and optimize perfectly. Hiroki said, give me that shattered crown. You will not take my life right away. But Jen Nala at this point saying, I don't even care about camps. I will dive this over and over again. Demon Ruler keeping track though. Dangerous spot to be in. A punch out. Jens Nala doesn't have flash. I think you are caught. Assault and battery ensures that they are stuck. Good wild growth to keep the tree alive. And quick sprint. And quick sprint. That's a miracle growth. Keeps Jens Nala alive. However, that is a dangerous precedent. The problems are going to keep occurring here. Jens Nala cannot stay in lane. 
They're going to try and save up Zombro just a shield over so they can go back to farming, but it's a problem. It's such a dangerous situation. Jens Nala has now been countered twice. By the way, 0 4 and 4. Yes, your camp's mid have worked, but I mean, the other lanes are having trouble. Top side, though, saying this is going to be a chance. So I think Nuna has gotten so farmed up as well. This top side tower is in dire straits. Oh, man. This is, uh, this is a big question mark. So we'll take a look here. I have also gotten word from our lovely, lovely uh, office awesome commissioner, if you will, uh, Vindy. Shockwave in the mid lane, though, as Hiroki at this point. It is, it, it is uh, the do or die situation. I mean, Hiroki has full control over this mid lane and is now going to be the controlling factor of mid. Top side will fall as Sir Isaac Newton is looking for a chance. But uh, I have gotten word that we have another caster coming in for the second set of games, which I'm very, very excited for. That will also see a tempo rush setting in. Demon Ruler looking at this bot side, though. Let's take a look and see how they play out. Jens Nala getting chunked out. The ball hurts way too much. This is now the fifth time that Jens Nala has got a pinch on Hiroki, though, jumping forward. I I'm not sure what that flash was for. Just uh, maybe looking to get the punch on Adam, but didn't throw the ball as proper as they wish. Instead, Alex going to be farming back up. And this is where things get very, very tricky. Dragon will be up in a minute and a half. That'll put uh, e EXE on soul point if they can get it. And this is a Hextech Dragon, by the way. This is going to be way worse in most situations because of the champion right on your screen right now. Alex, I'm pretty sure if you have Hextech Dragon in your pocket, it is a problem because of the fact that if you have the slows, if you have the soul, your poison will proc the slows every two seconds. It will be so cataclysmically annoying to try and run away from the Singe that you will just cry pretty much. That's going to be a fling now, and you can already see the Rylai starting to work. Uh, I am... This is going to be the quick test. Look at this, right? Already likable, and Sir Isaac Newton really can't do anything. Uh, Alex is just sprinting through and just being like, I am annoying. Please join in. Demon Ruler coming up to the top side, but it's a two on three. You don't want this fight. Teleport coming in on this bot lane as well. So as he goes from top to bot, just looking for Hiruki. Good silence to come out, but no speed up in their own point. Good dodge. Hiruki playing juggles, but gets knocked up on the edge. That's going to be a Briar heading up to the bot lane. Finding Drew in the back corner. Cosmic Radius is alive, and you are going to have to use it. Solo Mason going to try and help out, but the split fight is working wonders. Hiruki saying, okay, drive by by the Briar. No longer a chance. The Nom takes the kill, though. It's a trade of one for one. Both top laners get a kill, but take a look at the different value that they receive. Not only is the gold handed over to EXE, you also take a tower. Briar looking for a little bit more value, but you can't. Again, the headshots are doing work. Wild Growth can't save you. The picks, the moments flash forward. Solo Mason grabs a kill. Zombro taken low as well. But this ADC, this Caitlyn will be in their faces. Oh no, but look at the Kraken Slayer. It's done its work. Adam at 987 sends a 654 in their face and gets the shutdown as well. Turnaround by EGL in the bot lane. Oh my gosh, these teams are fighting constantly. It's going to destroy my voice at some point, but I love it. At this point, though, in the macro game, we are seeing a shift heavy on the emphasis for EXE. You can see it here, 13, 10, two dragons, possibly three. And Jens Nala is in no position to challenge. The best you can have in this might fight, but really take a look at this challenge here. Over the wall they go, Alex trying to get behind lines and is able to find it. But now getting jumped on, but already tanky. Look at this. That is going to be the Radiant Virtue set. And now a flash forward. Shockwave leads on three. The combination does massive work. And now they all will burn. The poison takes away on HP. Ace in the hole will finish off Jens Nala. No double kill. Hand it to Hiruki. And now the follow through. Alex with red buff and poison means Zombro can't do anything. These fights are over before they even begin. Swing to EXE as exiled. Send EGL into exile. Only one still alive is Sir Isaac Newton, who is praying that an apple doesn't fall on their head. This is, of all games, one of the cleanest that we've seen here today. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. With this Herald, a break of the mid lane tower and possibly an inhibitor tower would be appropriate. Drew, looking to just be an annoyance. Jens Nala has been 
fully focused as well with as much of a camp that they've thrown down. Even a challenge back. Look at that cut though. Brutality to be seen. Solo Mason about to get ulted and his land is a stun. The cut, the fear. EGL bite back. They say, hey, we might have lost Dragon, but we'll get the kills in turn. Four, one, and two on Adam. Five, seven, and two on Likeable. And now mid lane is open for a push. Shockwave again is up. Hiruki has that on lockdown. Shockwave landed, and now the wild growth keeps Zombro alive. Very, very close. But you save the tower. That's all you really care about. 17 and 12. I mean, right now, the game is swinging on a tightrope's edge. Alex currently leveling themselves uh, up in the top side. Level 13 already with blue buff in tow means that you can fully push. I wouldn't be surprised to see them try and get inside of the enemy base. Just run around for a little bit of fun. The teams have been pretty stalwart in their advances where everyone meets death follows. 6k in the lead though is the current mess that EGL have put themselves in. And specifically, a lot of this gold landing on Briar and uh, Sivir. Both of them trying to build up. Very quick blades currently set, so two item power spike there. But Solo Mason has also been very, very strong. Actually going for that uh, Lord Dom's regards. Quite fun to watch. Rue trying to set themselves up for a value target. Baron is currently on the table, and honestly, both teams could do it. They're going to look at it. It's actually started up, and remember, they don't have vision on the side of EGL. No one knows that it's being started. Unless they go hard check. Ward over the wall. Baron slowly taking away. Zombro's about to walk in. I, I don't think Zombro wants to fully check. I don't think they have full vision. Yeah, it's dark. Maybe they see the animations. There it is. It is spotted out. But five members of EXE are here. Is this going to be a steal? No, you're grounded. You can't even flash over. You flash in, and you don't get the steal. That's an unfortunate situation for EGL, but a great situation for EXE. They're going to run it down. They're going to chase down. Exhaust goes down, and Zombro is caught. That's two kills. An immaculate pacing. Likeable gets over the wall. Baron on five, as EXE are looking to close out this game. Exiled Gaming looking on top in all metrics. Gold, kills, items, powers, levels. Everything going the way. There is not a single factor that has started to lean back in EGL's favor. The only thing that we can see here is, again, EGL have not fully grouped up yet. As a team, they have been more focused on lane stage, which I do find appropriate, but... We haven't really seen a team fight. We haven't seen that on the hunt used uh, in a team-wide fashion. It's been used to run away. And also, looking at likable, this Briar pick has yet to shine fully. It it's been denied time and time again. And it does feel like that, uh, I want to say, the flex kick did not flex as hard as they were hoping. They were hoping Hiruki would be punishable. And yes, you threw five, six games in the mid lane. You still gave so many kills over to Hiruki that now the Shadow Flame is available. Going for a Void Staff, every single piece of cut going in, even the Grievous Moon, is now in the pocket of Hiruki. Hiruki is fearsome. Not just that Demon Ruler has been a menace on the Rift as well. Has not died once, 5-0-2. Oh, Doesn't have to build the Serpent's Fang to get in through the shields. But, I mean, it's just another point of power. Every single member on EXE is a threat to the absolute rule of EGL in this game. EGL have not even been able to set up their kingdom. Good knock up though on the top side. Haruki trying to run away from Sir Isaac Newton. And this is gonna continue. Yeah, this is gonna be a beast, but that's an early feast because of that fight. Now they're gonna chase in, in this mid lane. A good wall growth only keeps the tree alive for a little bit longer, but it is chopped down. Poison po uh, spoils the well. And Adam is going to try, but you step too close, and now you're dead. Remember, there is no Sir Isaac Newton. This three-man squad is dead. A charge of the Herald knocks down the mid inhibitor tower, and now Sir Isaac Newton gets into range. But still, it does not matter. Inhibitor is down. Huge value coming out of EXC. They're looking for a chance to end. However, Dragon is up. This would be the soul in what could be one of the more decisive games of the day. I, I can't believe we're seeing this. EXE looking like monsters and being the controlling factor here. They have not stepped away from the driver's wheel at all. They've had their foot to the gas the entire time. 
and EGL are being dragged along. This gold lead, 11k, is the largest we have seen yet in today's event. In the round robin matchup, this is the largest, at least on stream. Now, keep in mind, there have been other games actually rolling on while we are off stream right now. Uh, I believe all teams have played uh, two matches, or possibly two, I think, on this side. Uh, nope, two. No, three. I can count, don't worry. But there have been matches running on the offside. So, keeping this in mind, we are waiting to see how well it works and how many more are going to be seen here. Right now, it's a four-man gang squad. EGL are doing desperation plays. Likeable cannot deal with Alex. There is not a single chance in the world that Likeable can win this. You are trying to life steal your way up, and it's not going to work. You see here, Alex enjoying that electricity to come out here. I mean, Jens Nala has found Hiruki once again. Shockwave going to land, though, and you just take the kill. Then you flash away, but Adam flashes forward to follow. You are going to get the kill, but Likeable is alone. I mean, Alex is just dancing on him. Have you ever seen someone get tangled on this hard? It's not a fun time. Demon Ruler goes legendary and finds a kill onto Adam. Rampage. And it's just death all around. Zomba running around and trying to run away. But another chase in as the towers are going to fall behind. Good little ace in the hole to finish it off. As the deaths are staggered enough, 20 seconds left on any majority members. The only ones that will be alive are Sir Isaac Newton and Jens Nala. Ladies and gentlemen, in the fastest game that I think we've had here today, it is going to be GG in favor of this EXE squad. However, they're not dead just yet. This tower is doing a lot of work. Remember, it's still a little bit early on in the game. The towers have fallen. That's going to be a chance. Kills all around as they're taking quite low. Adam, though, the strong one of this game, is going to look likable, ready to dance straight into the front. You have to sacrifice yourself to the glory, to the gluttony of likable. Hiruki still wants a challenge up, but I think this is the end of this push. You've done enough work. You've gotten everything in the bucket. 26 minutes in, and you've already broken base. Drew takes the power shot, trying to keep Hiruki alive. So Hiruki is going to get jumped on. Once again, likable on the Berserk. Good shockwave to draw him away. But look at the challenge. In comes Alex with the teleport. They're going to try and shut them down. Once again, there is no end to the battle. They just want to keep fighting. They just want to keep having fun. And EGL are saying, no, we can't have fun. Why are we like this? That's going to be an ace. A delayed one, if you will. Alex going to chase away the rest of the minions. This game is non-stop action, non-stop aggression, non-stop bullying as Alex is literally in their face clearing away the minion wave. So there is not a single chance at a push. There is no wave to be gathered. Everything is leaning in favor of EXE. Bot side tower is going to fall. At this point, it's really only time will tell. How long do you want to wait to really end the game? Do you want to go for that Baron that's up? Do you want to go for Elder? That'll be up in two and a half minutes. What do you want to do as a team EXE? Have the book open for them and available to them it's a pick your own adventure with a hundred different paths, but only one outcome, their victory. And I have to give props right now. Huge props to Hyrule. Hyrule weathered the storm of a 1v2 and 1v3 situation and is still able to make power moves because of that focus in the, uh, in the mid lane. Demon Rule and Alex were able to garner massive leads in their own right. This is now a second chance at Baron for the side of EGL, but that Briar ult goes wide. No extra damage comes in. And because of that, Sir Isaac Newton's gonna get chucked down. Remember, no real defensive moments in the back. That's gonna be a nom to get one, but the Cosmic Radiance gathers on two. Sir Isaac is dead. Alex gonna chase down, going to try and burn them down. Wild growth to keep Zombro alive. But remember, three are dead already. This looks like the game ending push. This looks like the end of this game and the end of the first half of the day. I mean, the base is open, everything is open, and it's going to be GG. A little bit of a jump in, the final vault uh, assault and battery to end this game. The inhibitor respawn. Oh my gosh. This is pain. But no, it's going to be GG. EXG go one and one so far on the day. Looking at a third, though, or a second at least. Problematic for ETL, they fall to 0-2 going to be EXE that just stormed the base and take the victory. And again, it all came off of some of those early pinches. The Briar pick not working out as well as they were hoping on the side of EGL. And those are the things that unfortunately you just got to kind of roll with. It was 
an attempt at using it as a flex, but again, Demon Ruler, Hiruki, as well as Alex, everyone on the side of EXE knew how to punish their lane. Taking a look at the damage, taking a look at the kill spread, they want it out handily. EGL will try and fight back to get at least one win and not go 0-3 on the day or a little bit further. But for right now, we're going to go to a break. We're going to get an interview with one of the players of EXE to see their thoughts on the current game state and how they'll fare in the rest of the tournament. Please don't go anywhere. The EGL round robin, the double round robin matchups will continue in just a second. And welcome here, everyone. Right back to the interview table. We have a fantastic time coming to you. Uh, we have the ever so lovely Solo Mason who gave us a little bit of a taste of what is to come. I mean, a Solo, how you doing right now after that game win? I'm uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, it's always nice to get a win right before the break, you know, gear up for the second round of games. Of course. And I mean, you on EXE, uh, game number two, we got to talk about it, right? I I'm sorry. We got to talk about it. That thing <laughs> was close. It was nail binding. And yep. you guys pulled back from what could only be described as a pretty rough, almost train wreck like early game. How was that mentally? How did you guys pull back from such dire straits? Uh, it would kind of after the first pick that we got on Caitlyn, where we used Ashalt, we used the uh, Azira shuffle to pick him off. And as soon as that happened, and we were kind of going through the game, we we're like, okay, we just got to keep doing this over and over again. And I mean, Caitlyn was at one point, I think, like 10 and 1, and I think he ended with almost 10 deaths. So um, <laughs> we definitely executed on that game plan. Unfortunately, couldn't pull it through at the end, but uh, that's what it was like. Yeah, and I mean, you guys seem to take that energy and bounce back in Game 3 and what can only be described, this one, as the cleanest game we've seen here today. You guys, from start to finish, controlled every aspect. And let's start in that draft, right? The Briar came out round, uh, I think, R2 over there for yep. EGL. What did you guys think about that coming in? Were you expecting that to be played or were you just like, oh, okay, it's Briar? Um, I mean, I think Briar is a strong champion overall. We were kind of expecting it to go into the jungle. I think it is a champion that fits Gensdown's playstyle pretty well. Um, but seeing it mid, I wasn't really sure what to expect. Um, I've really never seen lane Briar very often, but um, Haruki played extremely well into it and uh, took over the game. I, I mean, we saw it from start to finish. I mean, there were dies and dies and dies. I think uh, Haruki really got the mid lane treatment, the faker treatment, if you will. Yep. Uh, and it was, and I think that is something to be really well examined because you really did seem, uh, you on the bot side, as soon as those ganks started happening, you and Drew started to push further and further in the lane, right? We saw you guys start working way up, start getting that CS lead more and more. Was that identified early on that Hiroki was starting to be kind of that camped lane and you had freedom elsewhere? Yeah, we, we had our vision control up very well, so like we kind of knew where Maokai was. Honestly, from minute one after, you know, Singe went to proxy and then found him in his jungle. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the call was to try to deny Sivir as much as possible. You know, walk up. Uh, Lulu left lane for a while, so we, we just tried to deny as much as possible. She couldn't hit the wave, you know, in front of Tarek and Caitlyn, so. It was a well lead done. that way. It was very well done. And then the CS leads rolling into that mid to late. When you started to almost feel those leads occur, I mean, what was the calls? Was it just like, this is our game plan? We're going to start, you know, hard rushing down because the fights came quicker and quicker and quicker for you guys. But it never seemed to fade away from clinical. I, what, was, what was your thought? Was that your plan to always play it clean? Or was it just like, we want to fight over and over again and we'll just make it look good along the way? Um, We've been kind of slow to like react to calls at times but uh, this game we kind of just decided to go for it you know we if we saw somebody out of position you know we we made the call to fight pick people off you know people like especially the circuit like sometimes have a tendency to like wander off by themselves and we could definitely take advantage of that and that's what we did in this game and it paid off of course and a huge dub on the board of course coming up your next match will be the i believe uh fourth match actually right after the break you'll actually be coming back here to play you're going up against tempo rush this is a squad that a lot of teams have actually said is, is a very high priority right very strong yep. team very well played and uh, uh give me a little bit of history are you excited to play against them are you uh, thrilled do you think you'll win what do you think i'm always excited to play against uh shopkeeper whatever team he decides to field um, <laughs> they're all very strong players uh across the board uh playing against kino playing against peanut 
all, you know, seasoned players in the circuit. Um, I do think that we have a chance to beat them. They're, it's a very tall task, of course, but uh, we're up for the challenge. All right. Well, we'll see you back in just a little bit. Again, thank you so much, Little Mason, for giving this interview. Any final words, any final shout-outs that you'd like to give before you leave? Uh, not really. I'm um, kind of enjoying the casting. I really appreciate you coming on. It's uh, been a great time. All right. Well, thank you so much for the interview. Thank you so much for joining me, and hopefully you keep enjoying it, and good luck in your next game. Yep. Thank you. All righty. With that being said, uh, we are done for right now. We do have a short break coming up here, and then we'll get underway with our second half of the games. You have seen a grand total of, I believe, three teams play here. Right now, there are actually a few more. Rush will be joining us. Uh, Tempo Rush is one that we have not seen. We will see them in all three games following up. And that team, of course, will be quite enjoyable, to say the least. I'm very excited to see them myself. And I think they're going to bring a lot to the table. Uh, I really hope so, as well. So please don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with some more EGL action at 315 CST. That is 415 EST. Make sure to tune in at that.